Spread! The table is set for National Orchid Day! Well, <laughs> I'm in southern Spain, so I now proclaim it International Orchid Day. Please come sit, have a beverage, and let's look at some blooms! Oh wait, <laughs> where would you sit? <laughs> Let me pull up a chair. Hang on a second. There, have a seat. I brought all my blooming beauties outside so that we could enjoy them together on a beautiful sunny afternoon in southern Spain. Meanwhile, I would have loved to have filmed this video earlier, but then I would have needed the sun umbrella and then we get this yellow weird sepia color. I don't know, it just makes things look off. So I'm hoping that me talking through the blooms and showing you an image of each orchid that is in bloom will do the trick. One character that is not on the table but is in bloom is Cousin It. Well, <laughs> for reasons, there's only so much space. <laughs> it's nice to have those problems, I have to say, especially this time of year. So let's just start with, let me see, front to back. I'll try and figure this out. I'll try and stay on track and I'll try not to waste your time. It's so good to have you here. If you're inspired by the orchid blooms and if you're a National Orchid Day celebrator, give this video a like it would be awesome and then please subscribe as well that would be amazing now I'm gonna start with my one and only Rapiculus Lelia that is in bloom that is Lelia Harpophila very strange that I only have her in bloom I'm missing my Albaraguenses I'm missing my Lelia Flava but Lelia Harpophila came in clutch I've got four blooms they are awesome off to the right we recently got the introduction to Patricia van Puyenbroek very cute. The blooms are still there. They have now lasted a good five weeks, which is amazing. Beautiful fragrance on those blooms. Little bit of a honeysuckle fragrance. It's light. It's sweet. It's not overbearing. Let's put it that way. Very pleasant. Let me move to the left. I've got my little Delenatii, my first time bloomer. Also lasting quite a long time. That is awesome. This bloom makes me smile every time I look at it. Her proportions just so cute and so symmetric. I love it. Then, oh, this is difficult, but my Kiyoguchi Happy Field is also in bloom. The reason I say it's difficult, I hope I can remember my train of thought, but fragrance wise, this has got to be my most favorite fragrance of all the orchids that I have. And I will probably regret saying that because on the table are more fragrant orchids and each and every one of them are just delicious and divine. But anyway, the Kiyoguchi Happy Field. Oh, if you know the perfume is Miyaki. It's one of those classics. It never gets old. It is light enough for spring and summer and then it has this elegance and depth for fall and winter. I love that perfume and to have an orchid that actually resembles that perfume to a T, fantastic. I'm pleased that my Kyoguchi Happy Field is back in bloom, although the show is a little bit patetico, but I'm not going to complain. The poor little thing didn't get enough light. So how on earth is she supposed to perform at maximum bloom count with all blooms being perfection? At least we got some. And then to the left of her, you'll see my Blatia striata in bloom. My Alba striata already finished blooming, so we'll just move past that because we're just going to be focusing on what is in bloom today on National Orchid Day. But the Blatia striata, oh my goodness, these blooms, why don't you hurry up and open up? Why are you so shy? You're beautiful, come on! But anyway, look at that color and look at the detail of the lip and all that is going on while the bloom takes its time to open. Well, plural, blooms. I've got a few more on one spike, so I keep focusing on one because I'm just asking desperately just for one to please open. <laughs> oh, and look at the cutie on the right. And here's a conundrum with my favorite fragrance, Vanderglossum Alexandra 2.0. She's in bloom. That spike came through the orchid top. I let it do its thing. I didn't touch it. <laughs> and she's got all these cute, darling little blooms and the fragrance. Oh my goodness, she packs a punch, but a delicious punch. If you've heard me describe my Chao Praia, which is not in bloom, but as a reference, these tiny little blooms smell and are as potent 
as the big blooms of the Van der Chau Praia that I have. They have the fragrance of that sugary bracelet that you used to, well, maybe still to this day, you get as a child and you can nibble off all the candy around the elastic. It's the blueberry one, the bluey one, the purpley one. True to the color, that fragrance is exactly the same. And this is my conundrum. Kiyoguchi Happy Field. Oh, one of my favorite fragrances, the favorite fragrance. And then you got Van der Glossom Alexandra. It's like, what? <clears throat> but we haven't even covered that because as a representation for all my phalaenopsis that are still in bloom, that are indoors, I didn't bring them out. Keep in mind, I have to put all of these back where they belong without dropping any of them. <laughs> my representation is my beautiful Aurora 3.0. She is a no ID, but I call her Aurora. She is 3.0 because my first Aurora, she didn't make it. And then I thought I had lost the second one as well, but she's still around, hasn't bloomed but still around, and then I realized, hello, now you're 3.0. So let's go back to the fragrance, yikes. Between the Van der Glossom and the Phalaenopsis Aurora, the two of them live next to each other in the indoor growing space on a shelf, and it's like, it's a competition. Yes, it is. The number of blooms of that Phalaenopsis, yep, overpowers a little bit the Van der Glossom, but again, those tiny blooms of the Van der Glossom, my goodness. They are potent. Do not underestimate their delicate little translucent structure. They really are a dream come true when it comes to putting your nose in them. So the two, oh, it's just delicious inside at the moment. Every time I walk back and forth, I'm in heaven. <laughs> And then peeking out behind, I've still got my Paphiopedlum Iona. Been in bloom now for six weeks. I think we're going to get to the end of these blooms very, very soon. They do not fade on the spike and then fall off. It's just one morning, poof, they're on the floor. And they still look as they did the day before. So they're not a wilting bloom, but still looking pretty good for all this time. To the right is my Ascacentra Ampuyathea Pink Dreamer, and oh my word, no aphids on her this year. Happy days, cartwheels around the patio. Because quite frankly, trying to keep the aphids out of these tiny, tiny little blooms, it's a chore, but it's something I try to do. But then again, I risk the blooms because I have to go in with some kind of utensil. My chubby fingers won't go there, and then I destroy the blooms. So nope, these two spikes have been clean since they opened and it's just awesome. I love this orchid. She is doing so well. Behind her we still got wild cat. Yes we do. Some blooms are fading but others are looking as good as they were when they first opened. No fragrance on that one this year which okay I can understand. It's been a little bit rough in the days leading up to her opening her spikes and can't have everything but moving on to the left. I have my Rene Marquez crossed with Brassavola Digbiana. Those blooms, no fragrance, but they make a nice little pop of color while they're still indoors because my night temperatures are not balmy enough for the likes of that orchid. Very beautiful. Love me those colors. It's just spring in your face face. And then Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga has also opened with five spikes. No fragrance on her, but it's, you know, it's, it's a Tokonaga. What can I say? If I don't prop up the blooms, we don't see them. Anyway, inserting pictures helps tremendously. So <laughs> I'm going to get away with that one just to show you the bloom. Behind the two, the Tokonaga and the René Marquez cross with Rincolalia Digbiana, is one of the spikes out of two spikes of my beautiful Anselia Africana buffalo crossed with Leo. Now all the blooms have opened. It is now six weeks into the blooming of this orchid. She looks as good as she did when the first blooms opened. I don't see any sign of fatigue and her fragrance is not as intense as all the candidates we've already addressed. But oh, she has a fragrance. It is very, very dusty. 
There is a warmth to that fragrance. There's some heat behind it as in if you were on a hot day out in, on a safari. Let me just keep saying in that way because that's what it reminds me of. And you get the dust into your van. But then maybe at the same time you're chewing some kind of a sugar candy or something because there's a sweet note at the end of that dusty warmth. It's quite an interesting fragrance. Meanwhile, I'm biased. I love it. Moving over to the right of that, ta-da! Dendrobium nobili variety Cooksonianum. Check her out. Minus six blooms because some little critter in the bushes thought that they should take three spikes out. <laughs> naughty, naughty. Very annoying, but still. Now she has a fragrance. I remember from last year, she had a fragrance of roses. And now she has that beautiful rose fragrance. There's nothing else mixed in. It's just like having a rose in your nose. Whoa, that rhymes. <laughs> she was a gift from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents. And I cannot tell you what makes me even more happy is that a gifted orchid is doing well. The pressure, you know, the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> the vote of confidence should not be underestimated. <laughs> so yeah, my Dendrobium nobly variety cooks Sonianum looking gorgeous on her way with two new growths and let the growing begin because fertilizing is so much fun when temperatures are warm. A little shy, no ID, Dendrobium nobili on the right there, but wow, is she a knockout. She smells of freesias. There's no ifs or buts. It's just a beautiful bouquet of freesias. And you know what the beauty is about this bouquet of the Dendrobium nobili blooms? Freesia blooms don't last that long. And I love me my freesias. I don't mind which color. I love me freesias, but they are not very long lasting. However, get that fragrance in a nobili form and you are going to have your freesia fragrance for at least five weeks, if not seven temperature depending. Delicious, my blooming alley is just yum. And can you see in the back, right in the back, like a church spire, my one and only single spike of my fire's tongue and villier. Her first two blooms have opened this morning. No ants this year. Can you believe it? So I get one spike, normally I get two. I'm really trying to do well by this orchid, do the best by her in my conditions. And yeah, so I repotted her last year and I, I only got one spike. But the other growth that doesn't have a spike is already starting a new growth. So it's already ahead of the game while this spike blooms out. I'll take one, what can I say? I'm just glad this orchid does still bloom for me because shame. <laughs> she deserves so much better. We do have a few little spikes lurking here or there. They didn't make it into this video. Oh, I hope those headphone wearers weren't just hit with a squawk from Ciliano. Unfortunately, but yeah, we still have a few little treats that are in the background, which we will feature, of course, once they bloom out. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour look-see of my National Orchid Day spread. Let me add inter in front of national. <laughs> Saludos from Southern Spain. I hope you have yourself a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.